Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. September 4th, 2022, I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right, I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea, I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 663. And uh, it's that time of, time of the month. Well, it's the beginning of the month, so I suppose. In any case, it is time for this. Uh, Jeff is going to choke on his beverage. <clears throat> In any case, uh, August, uh, I'm going to say uh, life, universe. Worked for two weeks, took two weeks off. Got a new patch in Final Fantasy XIV. Got to play some D&D. Now currently farming in Final Fantasy XIV. Like, not for, like, gear, but actually, like, on an island sanctuary and getting resources and building buildings. Growing crops. Got my air conditioning fixed. Vacation. Best vacation is a staycation, in my humble opinion. And that's it. That's uh, that's pretty much it. Pretty dumb. Oh yeah, that's right. I have a birthday uh, uh, last Monday tomorrow. <laughs> God damn it! So I've been around. Gary around, looks so happy. <laughs> so I, I have been around the uh, uh, had forty two revolutions around the suns tomorrow. Yay! Congrats in the past and the future. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. to the present, to the past, to now, and forever, and on again. Anyway, I don't know. Damon, how are you? Oh, uh, wow. Let's see. So Mine was very complicated. Yeah. So, uh, bah, 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 bah. Um, so earlier this month, um, I was the tally master for the Mr. Argos Leather Contest. Um, congratulations to Sergey, who won that. Um, it had been a while. It had been a while. Um since I had tally mastered a contest, actually, I'm pretty sure the last one I did was the last Mr. Argos contest in 2019, 2018, 2019. So, yeah. Uh, great, great, great times. Good times, although the bar was quite warm. Uh, but, you know, they had six contestants, and uh, that's always an amazing thing to see. Um so congrats to all those who have participated, those who won. Um, you know, may they continue on. And speaking of contest, um, I got to spend. Ooh, I got to spend one weekend, I think a couple of weekends ago, with um, at Cincinnati Leather. So Cincinnati Leather is a slightly different contest. 
it is all inclusive, so it does not have a Mr. Ms. or mix, but anyone who participates can then, uh, when they win, can decide which, um, oh gosh, what are those? What are those called? Anyway, like Mr. Miss Mix, you can use either of those as your moniker, as part of your title. So mm -hmm. for your year, um, uh, the contest was was good. They had three contestants. Um, the main fun that I had was I got to spend time with um, the World Bear family. So they came down as for one of their last um, hurrahs as they before they give up their titles. Um, so AJ Pubzio as um, World Pet, who was on the show recently, um, and then Zach, who's World Bear, and James Butterfield, our Glitter Bear, who is the um, World Cup. So they were there, and then Zach's husband Kelly was there, and I got to meet a few other people, and it was it was a lot of fun. I was glad to go. Um, great times, good message um, overall. So yeah. Good, good weekend for that. Uh, and then finally, I think on that Sunday, um, after Cincinnati Leather, um, Jim and I went to um, the place where we're having our wedding. It's called Receptions. And they were having a bridal show. I don't think they should call them bridal shows anymore, considering, you know, it's not just brides. Uh, but they had a they had what they called a bridal show, uh, maybe call it a wedding show. Just anyway, <laughs> not everyone's a bride. Um, and it was it was a small venue, so it was a smaller like uh, show. But it was a good time. There were several vin vendors, and um, they had they had a small selection of like light appetizers and um, plenty of places around. Uh, so, but for us, it was more just to kind of see what was going on, um, see the space, um, because we already have the venue, which is going to be providing the food and most of the decor, and we have our DJ, and also as part of our package, we're getting the cake, and... Like I said, we have a DJ. We have a photographer in mind, and we are not wearing wedding dresses. So most of the <laughs> most of the vendors there were kind of. Eh. We did talk to a couple. Um, one was um, they do travel um, like cruises and such, which I thought was really cool to like look into as a possible honeymoon and uh there was we got to talk to the hotel that is connected to receptions or has a you know a partnership with with receptions and allows them to um so we could potentially set up rooms for um guests that are coming in for the wedding you know spend the weekend you have a room you have a place and they also provide we found out that they provide shuttle service from the hotel to the venue, which is nice when, you know, we're granted we're going to have an afternoon wedding, but um, if people get a little happy go lucky with the um, free li the open bar and libations, they can have a ride back to the hotel and then sleep it off, hopefully. Um, yeah, it was it was a good time and a good event, and I'm glad we went. Uh, because we got to see the place, the room that we have reserved kind of set up um, with a with a really nice kind of setup. They didn't have everything in there, obviously. They didn't have a DJ thing in there, but they had like all the tables set up and um, kind of where the where everything would be, like where the bar is. The bar is already is built in and all that stuff. So it was it was good to kind of see um, and kind of realize in less than a year we'll be having our wedding there so yay good 
yep, yep, happy yep. to hear that you're making progress and also making interesting observations about the marriage industry. <laughs> <laughs> Can I? I mean, and the thing was, and the good thing I will say, and I will, um, it was nice to see we were not the only, um, I will use homosexual couple there. Um, there were a few, like actually when we went to go talk to the person who was doing the cakes, uh, there was a, a gay couple in front of us that were talking to her as well. So we had to wait. Um, but it was just, you know, it's again, it's just very wonderful to see. And I saw a few other different, you know, levels. And obviously there were families and, you know, hetero, you know, partnerships and such going on. So uh, it was, it was, again, it was, it was a good event. And considering where and when it was and the size it was going to be, I think it was good to kind of see all that going on. I don't know if these people had, like, were like us and had kind of already had everything set in place, but had you not, you had a lot of options available, especially for things like photography. There was a, um, I will call them entertainment because they were not just DJs. Um, they had, they were set in the middle um, and they had these um, cold firework, like sparkler things that they set off several times. But the whole idea was that they are, they, they don't give, they don't produce heat. So you can actually put your hand through them and they're not going to burn anything. They're going to burn, burn a building down or venue down. So yeah. And they're safe for like kids and stuff. They had a kid like playing with it and all that stuff. So it was, it was again, it looks really good, but it's not, it wasn't anything we would be interested in, so hmm. they didn't get our business. It was kind of funny we, as we were walking past, because we already have a DJ, and he goes, "Are you? Do you have anything? Do you have a DJ ready for your wedding?" And we go, "Yes." And he goes, "Well, congratulations." And his kind of congratulations kind of sounded a little condescending, <laughs> but they again they were a very big spectacle, and I don't know what all who all would really want that because it's a lot it was a lot not me not us some people just want to go all out fair good luck paying for it <laughs> <laughs> that's what i got to say about that fair very fair mm-hmm. how about you gary um <clears throat> Yeah, this month has been mixed. Um, the month started with a lot of work. It's ended <clears throat> still with a bunch of work, but my coworker did come back from medical leave. Mm. So I'm not supposed to be doing a job and a half anymore. I'm now supposed to be that doing just good. one job. However, I decided that I would complete the stuff that I was working on in their absence even though they offered to take over, but I didn't think that was fair um, because I technically did not pick up what they left over. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, I tried a really polite way to be like, you got stuff of your own yeah, to take care yeah. of. Yeah. Maybe you should handle that stuff. Right. So, um, yeah. So I'm hoping very much in the coming weeks before travel that I get a lot of stuff done. Um, <clears throat> about to have an intern start Ooh. so local university college uh individuals who are pursuing a career in public health um are interested in that they sometimes reach out to the health department and are interested in being an intern um unfortunately we do not have the ability to make them paid but mm -hmm. um it is an option and so <clears throat> one of my coworkers reached out to me and was like, I have someone who's interested in being an intern. I don't have enough work for them. I was thinking maybe you could utilize. And I was immediately like, yes, I always have more work than that. I create for myself than I have time to get to. So uh, uh, a half a body, so to speak, <laughs> would be most welcome. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so we did an interview and uh, we're looking forward to them starting with us. 
Um, the first project I'm going to have him work on for me is something that's already existing. So it's kind of, I don't want to say it's mindless work, but it's stuff that I just haven't been able to get to. And I Got really it. need to, um, preferably by the end of the month of September. Um, mm. And then is the it... second project, yeah, well, the second project is much more kind of aligned because they want to work in policy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, hey, I have a thing for you because I have something that I want to do. But... Yeah. <laughs> so anyways um i'm really hoping by the time i go on vacation my stress levels will have reduced quite a bit um so yeah there's that and i know it's been taking a toll on my health my sleep has been a mess like my energy level mm -hmm. a whole bunch of things um like and i've been kind of wondering a little bit like okay i got a cpap like two years ago i've been using it I've acclimated it to it, like, within the first, you know, 30, 60 days. I definitely benefit from it, but I've noticed recently, I'm like, okay, when I use it and then I yawn halfway through the day, this reminds me of before I used it. Mm -hmm. But all my readings and everything say everything's fine. So then that says to me, okay, so it's not that. It's not sleep apnea. That's the issue. It's got to be other stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, not enough sleep, like too much stress, can't shut my brain off, got all sorts of crap going on. So, yeah. And then, you know, your car breaks down. So there's that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm in a in-between mode at the moment to find out if it's only going to cost a small amount of money. And by a small amount of money, I mean not a new car. So that's the the key thing so i have reacclimated myself to public transit to take the bus um for our patrons who were listening to the uh, birthday show the last episode we did <laughs> damon and i kind of shared stories and talked about that so um i'm blessed that it's this time of year and it is not the dead of winter because i would be really annoyed <laughs> <laughs> to be tromping through like you know no snow banks yeah. but wow i miss As someone the... who had to do it As someone who had to do it for for who's had to do it for several years the best thing is if you have a if you have one a closer spot it's not as bad but it can suck when you have like to walk a while right well, I mean, in the you know the weather is always just kind of a factor. So, but it's been an uh, it's a, been a good lesson in reconnecting with like, oh, how much does it really cost to have a vehicle, and all the things you put into it, and the benefits yeah. of it, and like the privilege, like hugely the privilege of owning a vehicle that can allow you to achieve things in a timely fashion. And I think we kind of take that all for granted because if you just take a vehicle and you just kind of go places and you don't think about like when you don't have a vehicle and you can't go anywhere or it's mm -hmm. a very different experience. Like I was thinking about this. I'm like, if, if my vehicle situation isn't fixed in the near future, I have to figure out what I'm doing about my chiropractor appointment, um, about my haircut, like these things mm -hmm. that I just take for granted that I just go to. It's mm -hmm. like, Oh, well now I have to think about like, the timing of that and how I do those kind of things. So mm -hmm. anyways, so yeah, this month has been kind of um, mixed and stuff. I'm also on a mission. I'm resetting some things in terms of like my dietary intake um, and I'm doing walking. Uh, part of that is to prepare for the Orlando trip because we're going to the parks and mm -hmm. I realize that um, especially on one of the days we're going to do a lot of walking and so I have two jobs where I sit a lot and I don't do as much walking. Um, and even though my joints are starting to age, <clears throat> that's annoying. <coughs> yeah. Um, and I got that confirmed for my annual visit this month with my doctor. Because <laughs> I was like, hey, like my knees are kind of bothering me. And this one in particular. So he goes to do the exam and then he's like... <laughs> He goes, this is, I don't know why I'm so tickled by this. So I'm sitting up on the, you know, they have the exam table in the mm -hmm. office or clinic room. So I'm sitting up there and he's like, and he puts his, the palm of his hand ac across the front of my kneecap and my knee joint. And he says, okay, lift your leg. So I lift my leg, like my thigh towards the ceiling, because to me, that's a lifting motion. <laughs> and he's like, no, I meant extend your leg. And I was like, oh. 
So then I go to do that. And he goes, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, he's like, he's like, here, put your hand here and feel that. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And he's like, <laughs> he's like wanting me to do it. And he and I'm like, no, I already know. And so we, this it's not an argument, but finally I do it. And he's like, so you you hear, you, do, he said, do you feel all that? I was like, I feel it all the time and I can hear it inside my body. I'm aware <laughs> that my knee sounds like it's literally falling apart. <laughs> it's like, I didn't need you to have a shocked reaction to the fact oh, that like, wow. my knee sounds like Race Krispies being crunched. <laughs> like, I'm well aware of this. Now, crackle pop, fuck. <laughs> Like, so I said to him, you know, and he's like, well, he's like, we'll go get x-rays done. I said, okay. I said, so the worst case scenario is, I said, I've already thought this through because that's what I do. I said, the worst case scenario is I have to get a new knee, but I can't get a new knee because I'm overweight. And in order to lose like weight, I would need to exercise. But to exercise, I probably would need a decent knee. And he laughed. He he appreciated my circular logic that like, you know, I'm not going to be able to do a whole bunch of stuff. And he's like, yep. no, he's like, he's like, that is pretty severe. He's like, I don't think that's what it is. He goes, I think you have osteoarthritis. He's like, but the, the x-ray will help confirm that. Mm. Um, blah, 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 this and that. I'm like, okay. So I immediately, because I had taken time off from work for part of the day, he gave me the script, went straight over to the uh, location got x-rays within an hour and a half had the results oh nice no significant damage nothing's torn nothing's like decrepit i'm like oh okay and then um let's see that was like on a thursday or friday yeah it was on a friday that was leading into the pride picnic that was this month which by the way was a big success very much fun um thanks to everybody who came in uh eight and that was the weekend aj visited nice. so i think on monday my doctor got back to me and was like yep um, it's osteo, uh, remember how I told you about that gel? Um, he's like, you know, that's what you should probably continue with for the time being. So then I was like, do I need a script? <laughs> this is all on the app. I love the fact that my doctor's in the current century because I'm just like basically instant messaging kind of, um, mm -hmm. sort of like emailing it. So the staff's getting back to me and they're like, actually, you don't need a script because it's available over the counter. And I was like, well, I didn't know that. Thanks. Mm. So. So then I got this Genius. generic version. Yes, exactly. So I got this generic version of, I think it's called Volterran. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's an NSAID. It's basically a liquidish kind of ointment Tylenol. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, so it's a, kind of an anti-inflammatory, whatever. But notably, you're only supposed to use it for three weeks consecutively and then stop. Um, mm. And if if you're still having issues, you're supposed to let your doctor know. So I was like, hmm, okay, we'll see how that goes. So it does work pretty well, but I'm also not being super strict about using it four times a day, every single day, like if it says. So we'll see how it goes. But anyways, I'm trying to be a little bit more active and make some improvements and all that. So that's that. It's been a mixed month. Uh, we'll see where things shake out. Yeah. Here we go. Well, at, at least a month is Uh, I mean, it's not like a year where you kind of reset yourself, but I sometimes think that way. <laughs> Especially if I feel like it's been a shitty month. I'm kind of like, okay. <laughs> All right. We're done. I guess not that it worked. September. Let's move on. And getting into colder temperatures. That should be great. Mm, something to look forward to. Yay. Anyways, let's go into Boo. this. Gary, what's been going on over the Facebooks? Wow. Right. So <laughs> over uh, in Facebook land, we got a lot of follows and likes. Uh, so... I'm going to go through this lovely list of people we want to thank for following and liking us on there. Um, I also want to apologize in advance for butchering people's names because some of these I'm not sure about. Um, we have a couple of international individuals, so I'm going to say what the Google Translate told me their name is when I put it in. Um, <laughs> so just so you're aware. Uh, so we would like to thank the cute Hulk, um, who is uh, from Thailand. 
David Henderson, Kenny Franklin, K. Hector McKillen, Claudio Burrell Ferrer, and Minas As, uh, Ahmed Ibrahim, who is Arabic, Greg Aguilar, John Caprell, James Tony, Adam Hackle, Paolo Giuseppe, Angel Martin, Poncho, Tengiz, Chulu Hadis, Glenn Cooperman, Nady Soto, Claude Jones, Jared Mullen, Stephen Udy, Timothy Stridham, Saad Mahasa, Two Bears, One Van Tour, <laughs> uh, Mido My Age, which is Arabic, and Roberto Velez Echeverri. About that, <laughs> Two Bears, One Van Tour. I'm wow. highly amused by this because this is a profile by the Jeff Rock Cub and Kendall from right. several years ago right. when they toured the U.S. together. <laughs> I have I no idea that. why it just popped up this past month. And let me just tell you, like, I, I saw that one when it was here one year. Uh, gosh, that felt so long ago. Yeah. So anyways, I was amused that that came through. I've, it wasn't solicited or anything. It just popped into the list. Um, so Facebook's doing something maybe internally. I don't know. Uh, letting folks know. And speaking of Facebook, we got to mention Tony, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Cubs is, who is our guest. Um, this is regarding COL 660. Let's talk about Kink, the Leather Archives and Museum. Um, he said... Because uh, he, he actually shared our post and said, definitely enjoyed being on the show, gushing about L.A.N.M. Have taken quite a few people there over the years. We'll be back in November, most likely, assuming the world dot, 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 you know. Mm. <laughs> Which I thought was <laughs> kind of funny. Oh, he was like, as long as the world doesn't go to shit, <laughs> I'll be back in November. Right. Yeah. Oh, man. So, very, very cool. Uh, nothing, so to speak, on the YouTube side. Jeffrey. We've got some Twitter You know, followers. sometimes I, I think we need to shuffle these around because you know how annoying they get with, with the, <laughs> a couple of these type of names. First off, we have Tony Jeff, uh, 9674157171. Yan. You won? You won? You won? Yeah. 5987 Ben Bear 63. Henwo uh, 9538574. Cubster Dan. Uh, Jean Carlos 90. Uh, Sir Williams 08. Raf 4134. Agnabas R. Vincente. Vincente. Two six seven four one six two three. Mooks seventy seven. <laughs> There's four O's there, so I, I know. <laughs> this is a cold <laughs> read, by the way. Uh, Alderman, uh, nineteen eighty one. Uh, Ariel Lopez, eighty nine nineteen. Sedasic. Seek, Sedasic. Um, Miguel six eight one eight zero three zero nine. Uh, Andre Nina forty four. Martinez one one zero five one nine one. Screwdriver forty one forty one. That's that's all of our new followers on Twitter. Thank you for following. Hopefully hey. you're enjoying all the uh, naughty bits and posts about our shows. Yes, because I'm assuming that some of our our Twitter posts are being reblogged on there. Maybe, maybe not. Never mind. Ignore. I mean, <laughs> I'm not in charge of that thing. Uh, we also got a voicemail. Listen very carefully. Okay. Yes. Yes, I did it. I killed it. I think it hurts so much. It, 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 it flames, flames, flames on the side of my face. Breathing, breath, heaving breath. <laughs> I 
Uh, thank late, you. Great Madeline Kahn. Yes, uh, thank from, you for the from anonymous the, submission. For my one of my favorite films of all time. Star studded cast. Brilliant. Brilliant set guess? of uh 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 Shivium? I don't know if that's the right word. It is it is uh definitively a cult classic. And what is crazy about it is it is not a good movie. Like right. technically not that great of a movie, but man, it is, it is so good. It is funny, mm-hmm. like in the stupidest it's such of a good ways. bad movie. <laughs> Oh, that's a great Tim way to Curry. put it. He, I mean, if anything, whole... the, the acting puts it puts it all into good place. Right, 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 right. Yeah, no, because the timing is perfect for everything. Okay, so here's my question: Surely by now, somebody has turned the movie into a stage production, correct? Uh, I have no idea. Damon's going to start a search. Damon. They they had to have because I just realized. Like, if Rocky Horror is a cult classic and they do these like midnight showings, you know, yeah. and some people dress up in Broadway character. Broadway scene and has Clue as, uh, uh, oh, also available in a high school edition. Cool. Based on the iconic 1985 Paramount movie, which was inspired by the classic Hasbro game Clue, it's a hilarious farce meets murder mystery. The tale begins at a remote mansion where six mysterious guests assemble for an unusual dinner, dinner party where murder and blackmail are on the menu. So now I'm annoyed that my local theater community has not done this to my knowledge. Maybe they're, wait, are they about to do it? Because now that I think about it, I thought I heard a rumor and I was like, huh? And I wasn't really sure what they were talking about. So now I need to go check, which is ridiculous because. Oh my God, they are doing it. They're also doing The Sound of Music and Elf. Anyways. <laughs> Random. October 14th through the end of the month. I guess I'm going to the local playhouse to see them do this. Nice. I I feel like I have to go see this because this is just... Anyways, as we were saying, it's it's a classic to enjoy. Sorry, I got distracted. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> yes, I'm reading. I am as well. <laughs> I'm reading. Because um... they, they have a button there that says free to read. Or read for free. Ah, yes. Anyways. So... Moving on to uh, some patron updates, Gary. Uh, yeah, so we want to welcome... Our newest Cubster level patron, Daniel C., who joined us on August 1st. Yay! Welcome! Um, I also have to grovel and humbly give apology for mistakenly skipping in last month's What's Going On recognition of David T., who joined us on July 10th of 2018. We want to thank you for being with us for four years now as a patron. Yeah. Um, So, yes. And Big Bear uh, Cub Hugs to all of our patrons, to our Cubsters, Charles W. and the new uh, Daniel C. At the Uber level, David T., Lee, Michael Q., and Tim S., plus our buddies J.R., Lloyd, Michael, and Zach. So thank you all for being a part of the Patreon. Um, As I mentioned, I think in the post show of the birthday episode, um, we are getting close to our uh, one goal, which is if we end up with um, $50 per month in memberships after the uh, deductions come out for costs and stuff, um, then we do a bi-monthly patrons specific episode. So like every two months. Correct. So six times a year, we would have a patrons only uh, episode, meaning the patrons are live with us um, and we kind of do an interaction, maybe a game, Q&A, uh, you know, something of that nature. So who knows? By the end of this year, we might have that. Oh, my. Here we go. <laughs> 
Speaking of shows, uh, August was a busy month. Yeah, so um, it was also a longer month. Um, kind of how everything fell together. So COL five or sorry, six fifty eight was the what's going on for July of this year, and then six fifty nine was the let's talk about sex, monkeypox versus social media. Mm. And as mentioned previously, let's talk about kink was episode 660 with Tony as our guest where we talked about the leather archives and museum. Episode 661 was landscape of relationships. So Dr. Edward Angelini Cook rejoined us as our resident sex therapist. And we talked about queer platonic relationships. So we were talking about relationships that are not necessarily sexual um, or romantic, but exist. Um, so I highly suggest that people check that out um, to learn about QPRs. And then we just celebrated the illustrious producer's 40-second trip around the world with the Ooh. Jeff's Decade of Delirious Birthdays, <laughs> show number 662. And just remember, I've been around 42 times, not that this is my 42nd time around. Are okay. those the same thing? Oh, Lord. No, 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 no. Because the 42nd time around means I would just started going around the sun for, for the 42nd time. But this is, but I've complete, completed my 42nd right. trip around the sun. So I'm actually currently in my 43rd year of going around the sun. I just haven't completed the 43rd. So I'm not a 43rd. Right. Because wow. you're not one until it's been a year, right? So. Correct. Because we say things like, oh, how old is your baby? They're eight months. Right, 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 right. Timey wimey. Anyways. Right. With that, uh, let's go from all that sort of crap and go into something that's a little more perverted. <laughs> Oh, I need to not do that that long. <laughs> I mean, I it, it, would be, like, it would just I be a claim, like... which doesn't really do anything. Yeah. Um, so mine, uh, I picked off of Danny Franzese's Twitter. Is this what I think it uh, is? Bear hugs. All men's bodies are equally worthy and valid. That one. Mm -hmm. They got one skinny person and everybody else has uh, some sort of weight on them. Yay! I noticed they didn't really have like a muscle bound or like somebody with a six or eight pack. Right. Which I think was kind of intentional. I mean, Daniel does say in a reply, I didn't make the meme, but I think the point was any body is a worthy body. Yeah, I, I think it's more of like like these bodies, people have been considered in the past less less worthy. Uh, well, the all hunky ones. Uh, are, are like worthy. But in, the, in this case, they're all worthy. Yeah. It's It's Damon, what do you got for us? Mm. Sorry, I was reading something through. So I've got a couple of video, uh, yeah, a couple of videos. So my first one is from the, um, I've, I think I've shared him before, but Omar's Beef, um, Thick Poppy. Um, and he's like, almost forgot it was hump day. So it's um, hump day twerking for you. And it is... Quite the sight to see. Just saying. You know, at certain the points, there was a freeze frame. It looked like a certain picture I've seen recently. <laughs> Dude. Jeff, you were totally reading my brain waves as I'm <laughs> watching this video. I was like, uh, this, this is reminds me, me of the pre-show. flipping out my, my imaginary shade fan. <laughs> but see, I think the point of reference is 
this is where we're going over what we found and we like on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you see things like this, it's to be expected as opposed to getting unsolicited random just. Right. I know. I just see pictures. No, I know. Right. I, I see. I see the connection, too. The yeah. difference between like a um, sudden flash while you're watching a video and a hole in your face. I know, um, I know, I know. I, I, well, I don't have a problem with holes in my face. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> you have another one. So our second one I titled Feeling Thirsty, and it's from um, Hote Hoof. Um, and it, it says, uh, apparently some folks want my Twitter to be a bit thirstier. And there's a video of, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. It's cute. I was like, trying yeah. to figure out the magic trick. Ah. Uh of the shirt but I, fi I figured it out if you if you go frame by frame you can figure it out but that's yeah yeah it's cute well it's it's a it's a tiktok so it's a you know obviously a like edited video who does the whole shirt thing and it's actually a really good um, transition i will admit um right like he got his body position exactly right so you don't really mm -hmm. know the difference plus the light yeah. change and all that but no it is it's <laughs> yeah and yeah, I, I, only I if you're know. looking closely do you see where a little diff, yeah. But yeah, so just this, I, I ran across this guy. He is, um, I believe, he is also a pup, because um, I've seen other videos of his. Um, quite adorable, and um, I just thought this video was fun. Um, <laughs> It's very cute. Yeah. Looking through his. Uh, oh, yeah, he has a pup. Yeah, he's kind of cute. Yeah. yeah. And he's a cutie. Um, uh, it's funny because so at the at our last Landscape of Relationships episode, Mr. Edward Angelini Cook sent us like prior to it. He sent us um, or during. I can't remember. He sent us a link to. A, a thirsty video that he had of an older gentleman getting dressed or whatever for work. Well, I let that play through and one of the recommended ones was actually this, the one I just shared, not the same video, but his t TikTok. So he's got a lot more videos on TikTok. Not all of, not all of them are as, as thirsty as this one was, but right. yeah, fun, fun, fun. So thank you, Hote. That was a lot of fun. That was a good video. And I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm not, I apologize. Uh, Gary. Oh, you've got a couple as well. Yes. Uh, so the first one is, I titled it, Have I Mentioned dot dot dot. This is Beef and Boots. If you don't know who he is, I suggest you check him out on Twitter and follow him. Um, he enjoys wearing boots, leather boots, all different kinds of boots. Um, mm -hmm. It's a thing for him. And yes. he has a lovely, like, Fu Manchu style. We need to rename that style of mustache. Anyways. Because um, <laughs> I don't know if that's problematic or not. I mean, it is. <laughs> Anyways. Um, but he said, have I mentioned recently how happy I am that I got this jacket and how I can't wait until it's cool enough to wear it out? Because I am and I can't. And so he's standing uh, wearing black leather boots, uh, black leather uh like motorcycle riding pants and a black jacket that he had custom made. If you were following him, he actually went through a couple of different um, sizing things where they sent him like something to wear that was not the finished product, but like giving like the idea of the measurements and stuff, which I thought was so cool. Um, and for those that order leather custom, they're probably already familiar with this as a concept. But I was like, it was nice that he was kind of posting a little bit of stuff about like they sent him things. And it's like and then he can tell them like this, this and this doesn't work. Plus, like do video and pictures so they can see what adjustments mm -hmm. they need to make for the final product. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You OK there, Damon? Yep. Uh-huh. I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> 
I already follow Beef and Boots. I've seen this picture already before. I'm surprised I didn't like it before now, but I'm going to like it now. Um, yeah, he... Uh, ooh, okay, um, we're just going to stop talking. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> he also works in the medical field, which is, like, super awesome because me being, you know, in public health, I'm like, yay! Very cool. So, yeah, anyways, he's, he's a hottie. We appreciate um, him doing his stuff. The next one, um, so... <laughs> What is I don't, this? Does this qualify as anime? I don't know. Um, it's not animated, but it is a drawn... Um, it's a comic strip. Well, yeah, it's part of a strip, but it's... Um, and I'm not sure if this was a request or not. Um, Digit Slayer, um, known as Shining Biscuit. Um, I see a lot of stuff gets posted from them. Anyways, they have a Patreon, and this one is part two, dash three... Um, part four is in the making, but it's not safe for work. Now, this is a mashup. And if you don't know about, like, these two different, like, cartoon kind of universe things, then this wouldn't quite necessarily make sense. But I don't know about both of them. I don't care because I knew about We Bear Bears mm -hmm. uh, from years ago. And I was like, this is cute. We have three gay bears living together. They're not technically gay, but everybody has shipped them to be gay. <laughs> like, <laughs> So. Wow. Anyway, so there's a brown bear, there's a panda, and there's a uh, ice bear, um, which is the polar bear. So anyways, they meet up with this other bear who is from a different, whole different cartoon universe franchise. Um, and so he's standing there wearing a uh, tank top that has a red heart and it says K-U-M. Oh, God. Which I'm and not quite sure. It, which, which, which in Japanese is Kuma. Which is right. Okay. Um, anyways, he's putting up a sign and he says, hey, boys, are you looking for the Bed and Breakfast Hotel? And Brown Bear says, nah, bro, we heard your hammering skills are legendary. And Panda Bear says, and I could use some help with nailing. <laughs> My favorite part is Ice Bear, because Ice Bear is always to the point. Ice Bear says, Ice Bear just wants to have sex in the shade, please. Nice. Because <laughs> Ice Bear is literally like just dripping in sweat and melting. It's quite funny to me. Anyways, I just think it's hysterical um, and people like kind of lost their minds over it. And I just, I don't know. It appeases such it's a cute. childish part of me. It is cute. I'm just going to go check there. So yeah, it's called Ice Bear Doesn't Beat Much Around the Bush. So mm -hmm. links and all this is links linked on the uh, website for patrons. It's oh. also in the uh, patron post. Oh, so it's Hank is the is the other bear that I was talking about with the tank top from Bear and Breakfast, which I guess is a whole thing. I've not quite heard of Bear and Breakfast before, but I may have to check it out. So anyways, I thought that that was fun. Yes. Oh, oh, it's a game. Wait, now I'm like totally Bear and Breakfast. There's a wiki. <laughs> Hank is the friendly bear character protagonist in Bear and Breakfast. He is a brown bear who lives with his mother, Margaret, and his friends, Annie and Will. He is described in the game as cheerful and curious. Great. So we've probably taken a child's game and totally, like, bastardized it. Because that's what we would do. At the first time, I mean, all of the Ooh, captions 34. were for we were for We Bear Bears, which is technically a kid's show. And we talked about hammering and nailing and I swear wanting to have sex. So right, we're there. We're already well, there. Well, and when like out of context, if you think of we bear bears, what are you thinking? Right. If you don't. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Bareback. Yes. So I know. Uh, the wiki says Bear and Breakfast is a management adventure game developed by Gummy Cat Studio hailing from Romania. Uh, the players take the role of Hank, a big friendly brown bear, and take on the challenge of renovating an abandoned building in the middle of the forest. This leads Hank to new places, people, and onto crazy quests. Mm hmm. Interesting. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Moving on into our links. Uh, I got one. Um, I'm going to a service that we haven't recommended anything on yet, and that's HBO Max. Home okay. of the DCU. 
uh, online. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted to watch uh, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman in 1984, which I started watching by pause watching because I ended up being distracted by something else. Uh, I've watched Aquaman on there. I've watched the entire series of Justice League and Justice League in Unlimited. Uh, a whole bunch of other things. Um, uh, but it's all there. Uh, it's great. But one thing I did did notice, and on a whim, and not realizing the length of how long it is, I saw, oh, that's right. Zack Snyder's Justice League cut has been released on HBO Max. Mm-hmm. Justice League, uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League uh, actually has, like, in the middle, it was, like, kind of split into parts. Like, the, the, the movie, like, the actual video isn't split into parts. It just, like, puts up sign part one, part two, part three, part four, or something like that. So, it makes for great stopping points if you don't want to watch the movie, which is about four hours long. Mm. But, I thought it was really good. Fair. It really expanded everything, and I'm just... Like, uh, I have my preferred version of the Lord of the Rings trilogy are the extended cuts. But I'm one who, I, 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 if you have more time to develop characters, tell more of the story, I really appreciate it. There are some things which can be told in an hour and a half. That's fun. But those long movies, usually I end up finding ways to join it, unless it's like Lawrence of Arabia. Mm. And yes, I did see Lawrence of the Radio, which had an intermission in the middle of it. This doesn't really have an intermission, but it does have have things where it's like part one, part two, part three, and you could be like, oh, pause movie, <laughs> take a break, come back later. Right. So uh, spots where intermissions can be placed. But I recommend mm. it. So if you haven't canceled your HBO Max subscription because of the purge that recently happened with 68 films and shows that were removed unceremoniously and pissed off a lot of people. Probably because they were giving the exclusive license to some other service or something. Well, a lot of the animated stuff was independent and up and coming. So Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people, at least that I follow or I'm connected with on Twitter, were freaking out. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure what the whole story is. There's there's grave concern that HBO Max is suddenly, like, pulling a lot of stuff and it's making itself less, um, I guess, friendly to all types of people. So, Well, and, and if they're putting on other things that aren't necessarily uh, Turner company products, then it's probably all about licensing. They only had a certain window of time to have it. Which makes them more along the lines of Netflix in that case than like Disney Plus or something. But all the DC, Time Warner, HBO stuff are, should be their period. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Anyways. But yes, I actually recommend Zack Snyder's Justice League. I'm also been a huge was a huge fan of Man of Steel. People really didn't like it, and I didn't understand why. People kept kept going. There was so much destruction. Well, that was true in pretty much everything else. Is mm. it just more massive scale? Did you did you see Avengers? <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Disney's slowly coming around to addressing that stuff, which is what I find quite comical in the newer stuff. They're like recognizing, you know, that buildings were destroyed. People may have been injured, you know, <laughs> like, which I think is, I don't know, it amuses me because I'm like, oh, we're actually going to try to insert some reality into this mm-hmm. fictional stuff. Speaking of which, uh, Speaking over of on Disney Plus, yeah, She Hulk Attorney at Law, the new series, has just started. I am in love with this series. I realize that I'm a fanboy for all the Disney Plus original content, 
I get that. I've talked about that incessantly on here. But the fact that She-Hulk attorney at law has a character like Deadpool who breaks the fourth wall and talks to the camera is probably one of my all-time favorite parts of this particular series Isn't and how it Walters? is. Yes. So Jennifer Walters or I mean, as the person who She-Hulk. breaks the fourth wall. Well, no, it's both of them. Both She-Hulk and Jennifer Walters in this iteration yeah, break the fourth wall. Fight? Yeah, both of them. Jennifer Walters and She-Hulk both break they, the fourth wall. They're the same. Well, they are the same character, but they go but Jennifer Walters in this iteration can go back and forth from She-Hulk to Jennifer Walters. She's not permanently She-Hulk. Wait, so it's still the same person. Correct. Okay, semantic so beliefs. Let's, let's move on. Right, but they don't call her Jennifer Walters when she is She-Hulk. Well, I mean, they don't call Bruce Banner when, when he's the, when he's the Hulk. So, right. Moving on. <laughs> so my point is, is I love the fact that they found a creative, interesting way to introduce like the character and the things that happen, and the fact that she talks directly to camera. Um, really kind of clues you in that like there's a person who is completely aware of some of the strangeness that's going on. So now there's a lot of people speculating about whether or not they, that she and Deadpool will ever meet. And if they do, with <laughs> look at David's face, the, how that will play out. And my favorite part is the actress who plays uh, Jennifer Walter said, She's curious to know if they were to be together, would it be a battle about whose camera angle is being used and who is who they're talking to, which I thought was right. hysterical as a concept. And, and, um, and you do know that Ryan Reynolds would totally be up for that, right? Oh, without a without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. but there's but there's some interesting speculation. It's like our Deadpool and She-Hulk, like, is it a power? that they are aware of other dimensional existence and that's why they talk to a camera or not or whatever. So mm, mm. anyways, much, much to come about that. Um, also, in addition to that, um, I really, really, really enjoyed this as a person who grew up as a Star Wars fan as a, as a small child. Light and Magic is a documentary about Industrial Light and Magic, ILM, a.k.a. the company that, got birth because of star Wars, the original um, trilogy, and then went on to do amazing things still to this day um, as a juggernaut of um, visual and audio effect, uh, mostly visual. And so it's, I love what they did with this because it seems like they sat on material for a very long time. And then they intentionally brought in the original crew to talk about their experiences and camera. Some of them aren't with, with ILM anymore. And that's what I appreciated that Disney, I feel like, I don't know if everyone would agree that they did right by this part, this version of the documentary, but they, they didn't like present it and just like ignore that people were there. I mean, they, they kind of pull the bandaid off and they talk about some shit that went down and how George fired someone or didn't have them stay on and like, you know, and how that affected things. And I just thought that was really intriguing. So, mm. and I've always appreciated the concept of practical effects and learning some of the things that they did. I mean, some of this stuff is well known and documented over the many decades about things that happened, but there's also some just amazing footage and other things. And like, do you remember when the Silicon Valley thing was happening and like the dot com before the bubble burst, like how there was all this, these stories about like these crazy parties that businesses were having, like it was just like frat party behavior. If you watch this documentary, I'm like, oh, this is the OG kids. Like they like made slides in the parking lot, you know, slip oh, and slide wow. stuff. Like they did, they did all sorts of interesting things to blow off steam in that. And so I was, uh, very much appreciative. So if you're a documentary kind of person like I am, and especially in a, in a sci-fi kind of fantasy geek area, I would suggest that you check it out. Nice. Excellent. Hey folks, uh, that's the end. Aww. To play ways to contact us, if you'd like to comment and or subscribe, like, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you can comment, <laughs> comment or send us your mentions or leave us voicemail. 
Uh, plenty of ways to do that by going to our website, CubsOutLoud.com, where you see all the links that we've talked about here. Uh, you can also shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com or leave us voicemail, sex or otherwise, including uh, clips from some of our favorite movies. That uh, 361 will talk that's 361-265-8255. In fact, that email address, you can also send like an audio file if you don't want to give us a call. Either way. You can follow us on Facebook, t- Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place in the URL, or if you can join our entourage chat at facebook.com slash telegram dash col. If you would like to know when we're planning on recording these shows, you can check out our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You have various accoutrements, such as a consent with my four play shirt, in various different styles. We've got our, uh, I believe we've got our, bear, our Cubs Out Loud logo shirt, mugs, mugs, hats, various things. You can get those at zazzleofzazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And some of those designs were designed by Smashing. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashing the Bear. If you would like to subscribe to us, you can do that over on Patreon at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. We thank all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Yes. And if you would like to just send us a donation, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can uh, subscribe to us in many places, including Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon, and Audible. You find me anywhere on the internet at Box Set, Box Puppy, Box Cup, Box Something or Other, or Windgem, W Y N D G E M, on Twitch, where I stream Bears and Dragons, where a bunch of us nerdy ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Every, that's bi weekly right now. Every two weeks. Damon? Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub 79 that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9, on most very related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, take it out, everybody! Ciao for now.